If you plan to enjoy your lawn this summer, remember, so do bugs. Change their plans with Roundup Bug Destroyer from The Home Depot. And right now, save up to 20 bucks. Bug Destroyer kills over 100 kinds of insects, even grubs and ticks, and keeps killing for three months without harming the lawn. It's a long summer. Better plan accordingly. Right now, when you buy more, you can save more. Up to 20 bucks on Roundup Bug Destroyer. Only at The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Selection varies by store. Blog Talk Radio. Alternative facts. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. At 12.07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, numerous unidentified objects of a known intent and a known origin were detected at high altitudes over multiple locations of Earth's outer space by the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and these objects are presumed to be some form of controlled aircraft. It is not known if more of these aircraft will arrive or if they will attempt entering Earth's atmosphere. United States citizens are encouraged to monitor local media outlets as more updates will follow as information becomes available. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. Attacks by the undead have been reported in several states across the country. The dead are rising from their graves and are attacking the human race. At this time, it is expected that more attacks of this nature will occur in several other states in the next few hours. The intent behind the attack is unknown at this time. He has been observed that a bike for exchange of fluids is a method of transmission. This is an extremely dangerous situation if they crave the taste of human flesh. It is not known whether this event will last for hours, days, or even longer. Stay calm, as authorities have been dispatched to deal with these creatures. An all-clear siren will be sounded when this situation is under control. Your host, Rodney, the Viking Shortridge, wants to give a big old shout out to the Facebook paranormal groups that allow us to post our shows on their pages and helping us to get the word out about all of our guests. Also, a shout out to the Connor Sisters, hats off to Misty and Ashley. They are the founders of SOS Sisters of Salem Paranormal Research Society and host of their podcast, Paranormal Party. You can find them on Facebook under Paranormal Party. If anyone would like to speak to Black Diamond Paranormal Society, CDPS, to discuss your paranormal questions or issues, go to our website at blackdiamondps.org or email blackdiamondps at yahoo.com. As always, our services are free. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. 
You can listen in by calling 516-387-1922. Or you can go to the Vibe Radio Network website at blogtalkradio.com forward slash Vibe Radio Network. For deep within the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge, and I'll be your host tonight. First off, I'd like to give a shout-out to my cousins up in Ohio. Jennifer and Joe Shortridge of 222 Paranormal. If you get a chance, check out their talk show. You can find them on Facebook under 222 Paranormal. Well, tonight our special guest is Jackie Roberts. Jackie will be uh, discussing with us tonight about her alien abduction and experiences and the men in black that is if she calls in <laughs> she hasn't called in and she's from great britain and there's a five hour difference so it's like three o'clock in the morning i think yeah so she might be asleep and i might not have nobody on the show tonight i will bring up one thing uh while i'm thinking about it um uh melinda uh jackson uh Sad to say that she's no longer uh, uh, on the show. She's moved on to uh, to better things, and we wish her all the best and all the luck in the world. So as of right now, uh, I'm just going to be hosting and probably have guest host, you know, co-host uh, time to time. I know Robin said that uh, she might come back on time to time, and then I got Scott and Misty, and I got a bunch of a bunch of people that that they'd be willing to uh, jump in here and be a special co-host now and then for me. So as of right now, that's what's going on. But I'm still waiting for Jackie to call in. I've sent her a couple of messages. Haven't got anything back from her yet. So she did try to call in today at uh, five o'clock. <laughs> uh, I guess she thought it was ten o'clock her time. Uh, but uh, if anybody would like to call in, talk about something until she gets home, be be happy to talk about. It. And while I'm waiting for her, and see if we can get somebody on here to chit chat. I'll play y'all a little bit of music. Uh, this tribute we do for Art Bell, I really love this song. Well, good play.
I think I got a caller. <laughs> now, Hello. Hello. Is this the hot, steamy, sexy Holly Mullen? <laughs> it could be. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, awesome. You ain't getting no feedback, are you? No, sounds great. Okay, great. How are you, Mr. Sultan of Sexy? Well, I, I was doing pretty good to my to uh, Jackie Roberts, my call in from Great Britain. I guess Trump pissed her off and pissed all the Brits off, and they ain't gonna call us Americans no more. Oh well, slap my ass and call me Sally. <laughs> <laughs> now she, uh, now I guess she, she may have fell asleep because uh, she messaged me around five o'clock today. Uh, saying I've tried to call into the show, but it's not not working. I said, well, it's because we're not doing a show until ten, five more hours. <laughs> and <laughs> she's she was like, okay, okay. I said, well, I talked to you in five hours, and you know, she seemed to be cool with it. But I know what's happened. She fell asleep. It's three o'clock in the morning over there, and she's like, I ain't God. doing no damn. <laughs> Sleep's more important. <laughs> Yeah, for real. What was that? I said, so what have you been up to? Well, today I've been up to working. (laughs) That's about it. And I've just been uh, messing around, trying to get some promo stuff out for the gypsies. Oh, cool. Well, Mm -hmm. you know, what do you want to talk about today? You want to talk about the gypsies? Do you want to talk about yourself? You want to talk? About- I don't care. Let's just let's just put it all out there. Whatever we want to talk about, whatever comes to mind, I'm cool with. Well, I know what I like to talk about since I got okay. you on the show. Uh, this, you see the post I posted up about the uh, um, uh, trans that uh, are teaching kids. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and did you see the hell that that lit up on my Facebook? I didn't. I didn't read the comments because I just assumed that someone would have something shitty to say about it. Because everybody's got an opinion and they've got, they've got to stick their two cents in other people's shit. You know, it honestly, it's stupid. I think it's a great thing. Um, people just need to mind their own business on their own timelines and you know, get over it. I mean, this is the thing. I don't understand why people um, are so mindless because, you know, they they think they're smart. They think they have it all together. But um, to me, they look mindless. They look like people who um, they wouldn't know anything spiritual in their life. Um, They wouldn't know anything about humanity or about spirituality because when it all boils down to it where these are our physical forms um we're spiritual beings and we're attracted to who we're attracted to we we see ourselves how we're supposed to see ourselves whether it be transgender or as a male in a female body or you know it, it, it just sucks up the society's view of things all falls back to what religion tells us is supposed to be Oh, I agree. They they have been they've been comments that have ranged from the religious right to uh, one lady just being you know a bigot towards uh, one of my friends and member of Black Diamond and talking about her little boy and you know I, I just couldn't believe that it took that big of a life of its own. I just think it's a great idea. That these transgenders are, are coming to libraries, not schools. They're not trying to teach it in school. They they're just coming to a library, and the parents are, uh, you know, op- having an option of taking their child there to learn. Right. And 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 I don't see the problem with that. I, I don't see the problem with kids. They're so fucking intelligent. They're so smart. They're so understanding and and loving of everyone. And if I think if we teach every, all these kids love and tolerance, everyone that's different from them, maybe it'll save a life, and maybe they won't be no more damn school shootings. Well, uh, well, yeah, absolutely. You know, if it's, uh, hatred is taught, it's not something that we're born to be. 
Um, it's taught by other human beings, and they stand behind their religion and what they think are morals, good morals, um, when they are standing behind this hate. And it's it's just ridiculous. I don't honestly, I just I can't deal with those people, and I choose to stay on my path of light and love. Um, and fuck them, fuck the rest of them, because, you know, if there was ever a hell in this world that I ever believed in, them bitches are walking right toward it. <laughs> oh, exactly. There's one lady that's uh, friends of mine on Facebook. She's always posting that, you know, God hates sinners. And I'm thinking, well, how the hell are you, and I even said this in one of the comments, <clears throat> how the hell are you supposed to become a Christian if God hates you and he's not going to listen to you. I, I, I don't, I, I'm like, eh. well, he, she said, he knows by your heart. Well, if you've got a sinful heart, how are you supposed to get a clean heart and be washed of your sins if he don't even want to listen to you? I, I'm, I'm like, you make no sense. Right. And you know, when it gets, when it goes over to the religious things, and I don't want nobody to think that I'm anti-Christian or anti this or that. Um, I'm just anti-religion altogether. Um, but everybody's path is their own. And if you connect with God from whatever religion you're following, that's awesome. But, um, you know, keep it to yourself. And not everybody wants that religion. Um, not everybody follows that religion. And um, the beautiful thing about finding God is, guess what? You don't have to go to a church house. You don't have to preach for God. You have to go within yourself to find God because we are spiritual beings. And that is how you, you know, you find God in your heart. And um, whether it's goddess, God, whatever you follow, you know, it's cool with me um, as long as you're not an asshole about it. If you're an asshole, then you're an asshole. That's the bottom damn line. Oh, and I agree with you 100%. And, and, and I know a lot of people think that I'm a Christian hater, and which that's farthest from the truth. I I don't care what you believe. I, I don't. I really, really, really don't. And if, but if your religious beliefs start infringing on people, other people's beliefs and other people's view of life and their lifestyle, then that's where I got a problem with. Right. No, absolutely. When you're using your religion to spread hate, that's that's just beyond me. But, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't pay mind to those people. And if they have something to say on my personal Facebook, then I end up blocking them because, I mean, this is my page and it's for light and love. It's not for hate. And if you got hate, then that's on your own. That's your path that you're walking. I'm walking the good path, you know, where I love everybody and we're just you know, trotting right along like the damn Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, see, that's what I keep telling her. I don't, I try not, unless some people do, you know, say things that are <clears throat> like they're really going to hurt somebody, uh, but uh, violence or something towards someone, yeah, I'll delete your ass in a heartbeat. But beyond mm -hmm. that, I, I leave it, I try to leave it open for them, even on my Facebook page, even though 90% of the people, that comment i don't agree with them at all now the other 10 percent, yeah i agree with them because you know they do see that the world has changed and is changing and will constantly change and we got to give our kids every chance we can give them and yeah. to have this much hate i just it just boggles my mind because i there's only one person i hate and that's my ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard this story. <laughs> That's right. I hate that. I hate, and she's listening. I hate you. I can't even believe you're fucking listening. <laughs> <laughs> you're too funny. Yeah. I mean, going back to the whole subject, the article, I think it's a wonderful thing. I think, um, you know, I teach my boys uh, ever since, you know, they've been big enough to question anything. They, Honestly, they don't know any different, and that's the beautiful thing about it. It's like it's obvious that people teach their children hate, and then they turn into that adult that, you know, sees it as hate. And, you know, their child might even be gay or transgender or whatever, and they have issues with it and end up, you know, committing suicide or something because they feel like they are just, you know, abomination to the 
to earth, whatever. But yeah, I just I I tend to see the positive side of it. Um, if anybody's got negative negative to say about it, then that's their own shit. Um, that's their opinions. Which um, you know, like like I said, if you don't have something positive to say, don't say it because. You know, I mean, I could get on there and say, well, all these people praying to God to do this or do that over the pettiest shit ever. You know, I think it's stupid, but guess what? I keep scrolling. (laughs) That's it. That's it. That's what I tell people. If you don't like what I post, keep scrolling or, you know, delete me, block me. I don't mind. That's that's your choice. But I'm going to keep posting my opinions. And if you don't like it, yeah, like I said, get rid of me. I, I mean, I ain't like this uh, black sheep cousin in your family when I don't even know uh, a third of you all. <laughs> right, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, keep... I've had people come on. <laughs> I've had people come on to my lives and make comments before, like, you shouldn't cuss in front of your kid. And I'm like, who the hell are you, by the way? I'm like, get the fuck off my feed. So I ended up blocking them. Yes, I cuss in front of my children. Um, Does my children go around cussing and acting a mess? No, they do not, because my kids know better. So, I mean, yeah, it just all falls back to, to how, again, how you're raised and what you're taught as hate and what you're taught as uh, morals, you know. I know, and one of the guys. I mean, I have utmost respect for him. I really do. I don't agree with him a lot about things, but I do res- respect him and like him as a friend. But he uh, he he threw in a whole new dynamic to the whole discussion. He threw in that you know this road will just lead into uh, legalizing incest. Uh, bestiality, pedophile, uh, pedophilia, and I'm like, are, wh- what? I'm like, no, that's way, 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 way off topic. Yeah, that that's just that's stupidity. It's ignorance to even think that. It's like people who are against breastfeeding. Uh, you know, it, it. Oh, I don't know. It irks me, but whatever. People are ignorant, and you can't change ignorant people. They can only, you know, learn and grow, and you hope that they find their way in life, because obviously they're lost. <laughs> now, as, you know, you being a healer and uh, and being part of the Southern Gypsies, do you run into yeah. this kind of uh, hate? You know what? Um we haven't, to be honest with you, have I run into it within the, my time frame of being in the paranormal and doing what I do? Uh, here and there. Um, but it's not enough to to affect us. And I think that's the thing about it is that we all are very lighthearted and we're we're funny and we're outgoing and people don't have a chance because I think that when you're in confident, when you are confident in who you are and what you're doing, then people see that and they're like, I don't want to fuck with that because I'm, I mean, to be honest with you, if people come and which we wouldn't know if they attacked us, that's how it is with us. I mean, if people are attacking us, it's behind our back and, and that's cool too, because I mean, we just keep on trucking like they ain't there because, you know, that, that's not what controls us or dictates what the Southern Gypsies or myself do. I just let them hate from afar because I don't, I mean, we don't do anything to anybody. We just do, we do our thing, you know, uh, do what we love and keep trucking. But, um, I mean, the only thing that I really had, um, I remember we were on the front page and this is what, back when I was in the paranormal and with my group and stuff like that, we had a reverend comment on a, um, article that we were in in the newspaper we made the front page and they had the next week or something they put in there that we were dabbling in the occult and all this stuff but you know the thing about it is when you are surrounded by a group of people with lock minds um, you don't have to say anything because most of these people will go out them at them people. And I hate to say it that way, but it's true. But when you have good friends and people around you that know you and have your back, then you don't have to worry about anything because you might not say anything and you might want to stay, you know, just, just stay on your path and not look fine to the, pay them no mind or give them that energy. But by God, these other people would. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. And, and that's something I can't understand about people 
being so closed minded and not actually it, don't hate it unless you until you learn about it. And then if yeah, you yeah. learn about it and question it, then if you decide to hate it, okay, I I can understand that. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I just, I just, I can't, I just can't get this hate when you don't even know who I am or who we are. Right, and they don't, honestly, I mean, think of it this way, Rodney, they don't know who, I mean, they, they don't know who we are as people, and you know what, that's their issue, it's not ours, and it's not our job to stand up and have to defend who we are because the people who know us and the people who are going to know us in our future they will get to know us as the person that we are um and and if they can't then guess what they won't be in our circle they won't be around us they'll be in our past of someone that we don't really give a shit about or don't even know well uh, tell you know if you don't mind tell everybody about the southern gypsies what exactly do all of you all do Sure. Um, the Southern Gypsies were founded in February of this year. Um, I'll start with myself. I'm an intuitive healer and psychic medium. We are all psychic and mediums as well, but um, we all have different talents. Uh, the Connor sisters, Ashley and Misty, they are tarot card readers. Um, we've got Rhonda Caudell. She is the owner of the Nickerson Sneed House, and she does tea leaf readings, and now she's doing palm readings. Um, there is Nikita, she does psychometry, which is reading items, so she can hold on to different things and get readings off of them, um, and then there's Kelly, Kelly helps, um, she's our helper, she helps manage the group and, um, tries to keep us under control, but I think most of the time she ends up joining in with us, (laughs) but, um, as a group, we travel around, and the Nickerson Sneed House is our home. Um, this is where we have a lot of our base events. However, we are, um, are traveling a lot. We just come back from Pennsylvania last month. Um, we're, we're wrapping up some of our final events at the Nickerson Sneed because it is turning into a haunted house, a real well, not a real, but, you know, an October haunted house. <laughs> in um, starting in September, she starts uh, taking everything up for that. So we're going to Florida. We're going to Iowa. We're going to Ohio. We're going back up to Massachusetts, to Plymouth. Um, we're going to be at Scarefest. Um, next year, we've already got things booked. We're going to New Orleans. We're going to Nevada. Um, things are just getting crazy and we have a lot of things that I can't discuss personally and we are not discussing as a group because we haven't went uh, public with it yet and the people that are involved haven't went public yet so but soon we're excited though Um, we love what we do we're a sisterhood and we are funny (laughs) and loud and um just have a good damn time and that's what people know all of us for and they can hear us from a mile away (laughs) well when people come to y'all's events uh what can they expect uh uh, and how long do you all you know host your event well it depends on what event we're having at that time if we are at the Nickerson Sneed or if we're like for instance we're going up to the Bel Air house in Ohio in October it's going to be all about the seance and that's what a lot of people recognize us for that in our psychic days um our psychic days with the southern gypsies has come to an end at the Nickerson Sneed house only because we have so much other stuff booked away from home um, and then we'll start them back up next year. These are, it's just an all day event where we're doing readings for people and then we'll follow up with the seance afterwards. Um, we'll get some quick dinner and then do a seance afterwards. Um, the psychic days is a way for people in Southwest Virginia to have an outlet to come to, to get readings and be able to talk to openly about things that they've experienced, things that, you know, they have going on or have been going on for their whole life. And we're grateful because, 
over the past two years that we've been going to the Nickerson Snead House, um, we have made really good friends, and, you know, we consider everybody family that comes through there because um, we've brought people out of the broom closet, out of the closet of being psychic and paranormal and things that are so cliche to believe in. Um, they're just very grateful, and we're very grateful for them because, um I don't know, it's just very humbling. With our seances, um, just this past weekend, we were at the Nickerson Snead House. We had our last uh, seance at the Nickerson Snead House this year, and um, it was amazing. We actually do spiritualist uh, experiments as well at these seances. Um, Our seances are a little different. Usually, um, they're led by one medium. However, there's four of us at the table that are mediums and psychics. We all play off each other's energy, and um, we all just speak up. So most of the time, we do let some of the people that are attending speak up as well because we want to know what everybody's feeling, what everybody's seeing, because everybody should, everybody needs to know that because it's validation. Um, we've been doing seances at the house for since we've started like back in February so you know we have a a pretty good feel of the house itself of course Rhonda knows a lot of the history and we learn things new all the time um but it's really fun I mean we've had um we've had the classes we've had the um workshops and then we're really fun. We had like a, for February, we done a uh, love magic workshop. And then we done an Appalachian magic workshop where people get to come in and they get to make things individually with each one of us. And um, it's really a, a deal and it's fun. And, and you get to take all these little things that you make home. And we're going to start that back up next year and have only like two we also do gallery readings we have a gallery reading coming up in uh, august at the nickerson scene house and of course for anybody that is familiar with psychics or not um gallery readings are all about having a group of people in a room and you the psychic or in our case psychics um read the crowd our last one that we had everybody in the room got read and that's the beautiful thing about having all the southern gypsies up our reading for everybody it's because nobody gets left out and everybody gets a reading and it gets intense i ain't gonna lie shutting all of us up in a room together (laughs) well do you all charge or do you all do like most gypsies and you know they give you something instead of payment um, well, most of the time we do charge. Um, we love bartering. We do barter outside of our events um, because we do have to have some kind of money coming in because we do this traveling that we're doing and it's not cheap. And, um, you know, we have to pay for hotels. We have to pay. Um, we are in the process of getting our LLC. Uh, the money helps to help us travel and to grow on that aspect of it. And uh, we actually just had like a big event for uh, people who were on our email list and it was all a bartering day. So if they come in and they brought us something, we'd give them a reading in return. And it was beautiful. I loved it. Um, In life, we barter anyway. I'm a big barter. If I can barter with someone, I'll I'll do it. I think that's just part of the Appalachian way there. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, most definitely. And it's a way that's kind of been forgotten, too, in the Appalachian Mountains, too, you know. Oh, I know. I had an uncle. I always followed him around, and he he could take a piece of shit and come back with $100. <laughs> I'm like, how did you sell that turd? He said, you just got to polish it up. Somebody will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's definitely true. And, and I'd always get mad at him because I'm, I'm like, you cheated them. I'm like, he's like, no, I didn't cheat them. He said, they dumb enough to buy it, and they're dumb enough, I'm dumb enough to take their money. <laughs> <laughs> that but of is course, hilarious. He, he made a lot of enemies doing it that way because I, I don't know how many times I've seen people drive up in his driveway, come out cussing and raising mortal hell. And, and then, you know, he'd talk them down and calm them down and be like, hey, I'm, you're mad at yourself. You're not mad at me. You're mad because you was that dumb to either trade me or pay me for 
for the crap I gave you. So don't be mad at me. Go back home and look in the mirror. That's who you're mad at. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm used to, like, my dad and them, of course. <clears throat> I mean, it still happens in the community, but it's only, like, a certain group. But I've always, because I'm a big, like, I want my own spiritualist community. I want people to have gardens everywhere, which we do. It's the Appalachian way. Most of us do anyway. Um, but I feel like the younger generation, like my age, because I'm 33, they just, they don't do it. And I love it. Like, if it was up to me, I'd be living off grid, sort of, kind of off grid. I'd still have my Wi-Fi off grid. <laughs> but I would love it. Absolutely. I love living that way. I mean, uh, granted, I, I don't live off grid, but if I could live off grid, I would. Because when I was a kid, uh, growing up, I'd always go up in the mountains, you know. And, and from what my dad and my uncles taught me, I'd always use it just to play. You know, yep. I, I see the survivor the survivor shows where these people are doing it just to fucking make it through the night, and I'm like, I'm doing that as a kid, just playing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, see, I think that's like the thing too is why it's so much easier for people in the mountains. Like the, the way that we've been raised, it's easier for us to go to that kind of lifestyle. Um, but like what I would love to see more because for me, I consider myself an Appalachian granny woman, and that just means that the, there's a history behind the Appalachian granny woman, and most of us do have some type of granny woman in our lineage. But um, for me, I'm all about my herbs and just home remedies and things like that, and um, you know, the healing is part of that as well. So, yeah, I, I think it's really cool to learn more about that and to make people more educated on the subject because like I said yeah we're in the Appalachian Mountains yeah we have history and we still are kind of primitive in some ways um, the things that we do but they've lost all like history of what um, you know the magical side or or the holistic side of things you know there's just so much around us that we can do with things like you know things that we take as a weed that we can uh, boil down and make to a tea or make into like some kind of tincture or uh, make it into some kind of salve for everyday things so I think if we could get back to that kind of lifestyle things would be a lot simpler and we wouldn't be paying the pharmaceutical company so much <laughs> oh yeah boy big pharma I was on a show earlier today. A friend of mine asked me to come on, and we somehow we got off talking a little bit about big pharma. Oh, I don't know what it was. We were I was talking about how uh, Virginia uh, should legalize marijuana uh, yeah. because one, it brings so many damn jobs and so much revenue mm-hmm. to the state. And, uh, and he, and of course, you know, he was saying, no, that ain't going to happen here because of the fact of big pharma, it's big here. And I said, I know it sucks. And, and, and it's something that is natural, something that they can make money off of and, but they don't want to compete with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, honestly, I've, I mean, we've had this discussion before. I, I really mm-hmm. think that, um, uh, marijuana should be legal. It's uh, it's an herb. It's all natural. However, I'm against all that. Like, because you know, when they do, when it does become legal in Virginia, they're going to tax it so hard. <laughs> but that's not going to stop anybody from the way we get it around here. <laughs> I mean, that's true. I got 26 acres up there filled. I could, woo wee. That'd be nice to be able to grow all of it and, you know, give the government half and I keep half. <laughs> <laughs> listen i mean i'm just gonna put it all out there when i was younger my, my wish my uncle and them don't do it anymore but you know we all have somebody that knows somebody or is somebody that does that so mm. i mean it's just ridiculous i think that you know they they everybody else is legalizing it why not i mean i'd like to be able to partake and not have to worry about losing my job you know exactly and, and and that's just something else, and I, and I hate, I know this is kind of going to go into politics a little bit, and I know a lot of people don't like to talk to me about politics, but. <laughs> I hate yeah. politics, so I, I don't even know. Go ahead. 
But you know, but you know, coal mine. And yeah. the mine the mining industry in this area has went down and it, and it, I don't think it'll ever recover to the days it was in its glory days in the sixties and seventies. And to uh to have a, a, an opportunity to bring solar or uh, marijuana and stuff like that into our area to help uh, create some jobs, I think that's wonderful. Uh, but it just gets so much pushback from people. No, I, I want to be a coal miner. I want to. Be, I miss my hundred thousand dollar a year check. And I'm like, you know, my daddy was a coal miner. I was a coal miner. My grandpa, everybody, my family. And you yeah, know what? Every one of them hated it. They hated working yep. in mine. Yeah, because and they ended they up with um, my my yep. uncle. He was uh, he was ran a drill up on the strip job. It was open door back then. They didn't have to. He's got gray lung. He's fifty some years old, and you think he was on his deathbed. My papa, he had black lung. He passed away in December, but yeah, I mean it's just it, I get it, and, and people around here especially around here i mean even it goes to the radio stations and things like that all liberals with their you know save save the trees and stuff like that but what it boils down to it i I had this discussion with people at work like the clients that call in and uh, tell them where i'm from and things like that i'm not not religious i'm not political however i think that you know seeing that this is how we were raised this is the jobs that are in front of us. Why can't we have other jobs to come in to give people the option to fall back on something? Because right now, it's either you are moving away to oil rigs or you're on drugs and selling drugs. And, and that's the, I mean, that's the truth of it. Um, yeah, some of the coal mines are running, but for how long, who knows? Um, so, and I can see from the environmental point of it, I just kind of stand back. I mean, I get people have to have a job. People have to have, they have to survive. I get that. Um, and then, you know, I always look at the, the way that everything's ran and, um, it's obvious that things could be done differently to bring jobs in, um, to not have a, so, so tucked away into uh, where we have to go two hours away to go to a, you know, a factory job or something like that, because people assume that just because you're in a small area that there's at least like some huge factory somewhere that everybody works at. That's not true. It might be true on out, but not where we live. It's the coal mines. It's driving a truck or, you know, you're going to the oil rig. That's true. And I've done all three. Yeah, and I'm see? broke. I, yeah, and I'm 48 years old, and I'm broke down, and and but it was because I, you know, I understand. Like you said, we all understand that we have to work, we have to provide for our families. But mm-hmm. the thing that got me was, you know, the men like my dad and my grandfather that fought for uh, the the rights of the miners of the union. And these younger miners could care less about the union. They just don't understand what the union has done to save so many lives and to help get that $100,000 paycheck they got right now and the insurance and everything. I mean, you're driving around in a $60,000 pickup while everybody else is driving around a 20-year-old piece of shit. I mean, come on. Don't think you're better. They, they've hyped, right. to me, they've hyped up coal mining now. It's like a glamorous life, but you're not showing what happens yeah. to a coal miner after 10, 15, or 20 years of being under the ground. Absolutely. And and not just that, it is the environment, too. And I understand that more now, I guess, than ever. Um, and I'm not dissing coal mining because, look, I mean, I'm I'm with you, Rodney. That's been in our blood. That's what all of us around here, that's in our blood. But there comes a point when it's just like religion. You have to stand back and say, what the fuck? You know, this is this is affecting this, and this is not supposed to be this way. Um, you know, it's just what has been put in front of us, um, you know, just like the salt mine communities, things like that. Um, but the coal mining communities... They they go they stretch from here to 
up to Pennsylvania, the co camps, housing, and all that. Um, I went up to Pennsylvania up to, because uh, the Southern Gypsies, we went up to Selma, and they was this huge, I mean, we know co camp houses. I mean, right. because, hello, <laughs> we know when we see them. There was a whole fucking city of co camp houses. I was like, the fuck? I'm like, I knew, I knew that this. This, that like they had to run this train right down through Coburn and Wise County where we're from and and I was talking to uh, Bill Reeve about it and he said yeah he said they they run down to Virginia because you know in history that they talk about coal mining and stuff like that and bringing in the trains and uh, things like that they talked about them moving from Pennsylvania and stuff like that but now Pennsylvania has gas wells. Oh yeah. Gas, and that's what Buchanan County, where I'm from, that's what, uh, uh, after the coal mines and everything shut down down there, it's all gas. Yeah. Well, well I, I, mean, there's, there's a, I think there's a couple of mines still open. I know a friend of mine, he even posted on Facebook, he keeps arguing with me about coal. And, and I keep telling him, I said, it's great that they're opening up some jobs. It's great. I said, I keep hearing Trump and everybody say there's jobs. There's more jobs than there are people to work on. Well, why are oh, they no. in Southwest Virginia? Right. Exactly. Because oh, everybody has to move outside of Southwest Virginia. And even people who get, and it's just not the coal mines. So let's not just get stuck on the coal mines because there's people who go to college and get degrees in certain things like. Yeah, nursing around here because guess what? We've got all kinds of old people that are, you know, nursing homes that are never going to be empty, you know. Um, yeah, there there's jobs there. There are jobs at the hospital. You're always going to have sick people because it goes back to the damn government and the pharmaceutical companies because, you know, you got obesity. You've got, you know, diabetes. You have high blood pressure. All the things that are fed to us to make us sick so we can rely back on the government. And the pharmaceutical companies, which are the top dogs um, of getting the money in the banks. So, you know, if you really step back and you look at the situation, we, the I mean, we are controlled. Obviously, everybody knows that. But we are controlled in a way that is, um, in a way where we are so stupid and blinded. So it's just not spiritually, because we are stupid and blinded spiritually too, which falls back on our conversation earlier about people who are biased, racist, whatever you are, and um, with the government doing what it's doing, what people don't understand is if we step back from that, look at all of it, take a look at it, and if we backtrack within um, the way that people used to do things, uh, like living off the land, uh, eating more of organic foods, and uh, actually having to to walk to do things that we could find our health would get better, and then the government don't have to rely on so much of us paying into the pharmaceutical companies, right? Because people start getting healthy. So that's why you see all the magic diet pills, you have gastric bypass, you have all these surgeries to help you lose weight um, or, you know, to get rid of certain diseases. You know, it's just, it's just fucked up because our food is also, you know, the same thing. It's just all just fucked up. <laughs> it is, it is a fucking mess. It, and, and it's all over one word. Greed. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the money, money, money. And I could give a shit less. I've never had money in my life. And if I ever do, you probably wouldn't ever know it because I sure in the hell wouldn't act like it. Um, I would probably give more than I would ever take. And that's how I live my life because I was raised right. But, um, you know, if people could actually look at this without greed in their life, then maybe we could have a better, um, better country in itself but that's why i don't do politics they're all about greed not only that it, they're already set um they already know what's going to happen you can't tell me nothing less than that yes i'm a conspiracy theorist and yes i know these people are putting them positions you can't tell me they're not especially the president oh my god i, I like know I, there's a lot 
I know there's a lot of Trump supporters out there in our area, but and I am a very, very small minority <laughs> in this area that's completely Yeah. For real. Hey, I do have to change the subject about religion and politics and all that bullshit. Um, I do uh have a cool story to share if you'd like. Are you there? Did I lose you? Rodney? Hello? Hello? Rodney? Can anybody hear me? Okay. Rodney said to hang on. So if anybody can hear me, I want to tell you a cool story. Maybe. I ain't going to tell you yet, because if you can't hear me, then it's not a cool story. Oh, okay. It disconnected them. So you guys probably can still hear me. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> I can. Oh my God, I'm having to call you from the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if they could still hear me or not. So I just like, okay, I won't tell you this cool story yet. <laughs> okay, I guess now you can tell me. I I don't. It, it did that. You know how you get disconnected that dead yeah. that thing. Yep, I, I do. I don't always have trouble. I have more trouble. Uh, when I talk to Ryan about this, Ryan's like, I never have no trouble. I'm like, well, <laughs> well I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have this really cool story uh, to to tell you guys. Um, it comes from the Crypto Crew, and it is ran by Thomas Markham. He is a really, really close friend of mine. He is actually uh, what he sounds. He's a cryptid uh, guy, so he's a Bigfoot hunter. And he's encountered Bigfoots, things like that. Um, I was uh, very blessed enough on one of our events a few weeks ago to have an individual come up to me and tell me their story. I was the second person to ever hear this story, and it happened when he was 16 years old. And this happened on Elk Mountain in North Carolina. And I'm actually just going to read the article off to you because Thomas put this together very beautifully, by the way. Um Because this individual shared his story and, you know, he wanted to keep his name private, but we thought that if we shared his story that other people may hear it and be able to come forth and say, yes, I've had the same experience. Now, mind you, this did happen uh, quite a while ago because the sighting was actually um, when he was 16, he's 65 now, and he's never told anybody but his fiance that he just come out and told, and then he felt very inclined to tell me about his experience which I could see in his eyes. Um, This man, you could tell, has PTSD from this experience. And I talked to Thomas about this, and he said that um, most people that have had true encounters will have PTSD, and you can tell by their demeanor, which we all know. I mean, if we have that good head on our shoulders. But um, this is is a cool story, so I'm going to go ahead. Okay, Rodney? That's fine. Okay, awesome. All right, so two boys chased by possible dogman creature. This report comes our way thanks to our good friend Holly Mullins. As soon as, uh, as some of you, <laughs> I can't read. As some of you may know, Holly's intuitive healer along with several other talents. She also does numerous events in this 
presents her with the opportunity to meet and talk with a lot of people. She recently talked with a gentleman who had a harrowing experience. The Sorry. The man has never told his story to the public, and Holly was the only second person he'd ever told. He also wishes to remain anonymous for this uh, report. We will just call him Pete. The event described below happened at Elk Mountain in North Carolina. Pete's seen this creature on multiple occasions over the years, and which he had, by the way. Um, even like he he has PTSD with it so badly that this thing's like playing in his dream. <laughs> You are, are you there? there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. But, oh, now I got to head He also thinks that his papa had seen it too, but not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it finally kicked back on. <laughs> I had the phone on and I got all kinds of echo and weird noises. I like that weird UFO thing going on. Oh, I love that too. I've heard that, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am so sorry. It's okay. You're cool. You're cool. Um, they all live around the same mountain, and his papa did tell him that the Native Americans would use the mountain as hunting grounds, which, of course, it's Elk Mountain. That's what they did. Um, they would go. The Native Americans would uh, use it as hunting grounds for the elk. Um, there are caves there that were found with relics and things in it. I, there's other cool stories that beyond this post, but. Um, the uh, event described below. Oh shit! I just read that. Damn it. Pete is off. Pete is also sure that he did not see a Bigfoot on the day in question. Pete and his friend were in the mountains when they saw this creature. Pete describes it as shaggy. Pete said it was dog-like, but it was intelligent though. The creature began to chase the boys. Pete said as they ran, they would think it was gone and it would be off from the side and nudge them over holly was able to ask pete to describe the event in more details here is what pete told her it was about six foot three inches to six foot five inches tall its hair was not even it was longer on its back and sides were very shaggy and matted it was black but not shiny like a bear it had really dark brown hair mixed in with it the hair on its arms were also shaggy and long but not as long. I really can't remember how it was on its legs. It had a small head, but I don't remember the hair details. It had black eyes. The pupils were super dark gray. It had large eyes. The whites of its eyes were very bright, but mostly it was very hard to see them. Its eyes were positioned like ours. I don't remember details about eyelashes. Its forehead was not large. Its ears were not like a dog, but were located where ours are, but they were really dark in color and flat against the head. Its mouth was large and it had teeth like a wolf, and it would open it real wide. Its teeth were not really, really white, but dingy, almost yellow. Its mouth was kind of out, but not like a dog's muzzle. I can't remember a lot about its nose. It had a large chest and its arms are long, and when it runs, it is on all fours as well as upright. It is faster than anything I've ever seen, much faster than a deer. It can jump like a large cat really far and can land with no sound. It has dark hands and black fingernails. It has fingers and the thumbs. They have short hair on them as well. It can scream louder than you can imagine. It chased my friend and myself for two miles playing cat and mouse with us. It would throw you to the ground, but then, but would not pounce on you. I ran under an overhang to escape it, and it was there waiting on me. And it was about two inches from my face, looking me in the eyes, and screamed so loud it stunk like rotting meat. It would come at you from every direction. After talking with Pete, it was clear he struggles with seeing this thing. There is a real good chance he is suffering from PTSD. Another thing to remember is that Pete was a mere 16-year-old boy when this happened to him. He is now 65 and had only told his story to one other person. If I'm correct, it would put the sighting at 1969. And it just says a special thanks to Pete and Holly for contacting me with this report. While some people may want to thank, want you to think Bigfoot and Dogman are just warm and fuzzy creatures, the truth is that sometimes they are aggressive and dangerous. These creatures are very much like us. They are good ones and they're bad ones. Tom. 
So I thought it was a really cool story because when he told it to me, um, you know, you could tell that he were he was serious about what he's saying, and he didn't want nobody to think he was crazy. Oh yeah! Wow. Yep. I know, and, I know. When people around here have these experiences, especially the old timers, they don't they don't really like to talk about it. No, no. That's something you don't do. I mean, it, it might come out like years down the road. Um, my uncle actually spotted a Bigfoot um, not far from where I live. He was uh, driving a coal truck back in the 80s, and he saw one. And, you know, for him to come out and say it was a big deal because men around here, they know what they're looking at. Everybody's back in the woods here. They know what's what. So if you see something, you know to, you can identify it. and that's like you know Pete in North uh, North Carolina uh, people are raised like that around them mountains too they know what to look for and what's pretty cool about his story is what was um, not in that one is that he said he went and hiked the mountains um, not too long ago uh, like a, maybe 10 or so years ago and he found a cave there with his friend and it was like a burial um, cave for the young is what they said it was and there was relics and everything in there and they took them out and he went back to his his grandfather and he said you get your ass back there and you take them back to that cave because that's something you don't do but now the states took over elk mountain so who knows what's going on up there um it, it's a pretty cool story um i've never experienced anything with a cryptid before but i'm definitely obviously open-minded and you can tell that the people that have these true experiences are shaken by them oh yeah I, did i ever tell you experience i had with one uh i don't think so or i was uh i was about 20 19 20 21 somewhere right in there and i was hunting over here at cold creek and i was walking back around the side of a mountain and on a trail and the way you come around this little cliff rock hanging you can't see around the bend until you actually get around it. Uh -huh. And I don't know, you, you kind of get this gut feeling. It, but you kind of put it in the back of your head because you're like, oh, you're just scaring yourself. Like, you know, as soon as you walk around, you're going to see something you don't want to see. Uh -huh. I'd be damned if, I, if that feeling wasn't right. Because <laughs> when I walked around the bend, here's this, you know, and I'm about six foot three, three and a half, four or something. And, and this, this, beast is, is taller than me it had to be a good seven foot and it had a small one beside of it and uh it stopped because it was it was walking in and it turned around and stopped and looked at me and the little one just got up you know hunkered up beside of its leg and we just stood there and staring at each other going who is going to do what in my heart <laughs> i thought it was going to beat out my fucking chest i couldn't I couldn't breathe, and, and if yeah. you know, I was trying to make like shallow breath, so I, you know, you're thinking just even breathing will piss this thing off, right? And you know, and there for a second, I thought maybe I could get a shot off at it, and then it just mm -hmm. kept looking at me, and I kept looking at the little one, and I'm like, I can't do that, I can't do yeah. that. So finally, I, I took the first step back, and then it took a step back. I took a step back. It took a step back. Right. Slowly started backing away, and then it backed away, and I just kept walking backwards. It, it, <laughs> I bet I walked a half a mile backwards. And, <laughs> and then, you know, I just finally sat down on a rock, and I, I, I could hear it moving up in the mountains further away from me, and I was just sitting there just finally, I can breathe. I can breathe. Oh, God, dang. And now I know why hunters, when they see them and they got a gun, they don't kill them because yeah. what you see, you see a little bit of hum humanity in their eyes. Yeah, with a little one, and and it. I've always wanted to see it again, but I don't want to sneak up on one like I did. I didn't need. Yeah, one no, that. I don't want to be caught in the middle of the woods with me just looking around, thinking, "How fast can I fucking run?" You know. 
I, exactly. I get it. Like I couldn't imagine. And that's how this guy talked about his experience. I mean, it was he was there was no laughter in that man's voice. It was it was very dramatic for him. And he's sixty five years old and still dealing with it. So it's something that I'm ongoing, like working with him because um, you know, as far as the healing aspect of what I do, um, I'm I'm gonna try to work with him on that, that PTSD. But I told him that look, you sharing your story, even if it don't have your name on it, I think it's going to help you because he said he's been researching and he said he can't find any other descriptions of the creature like he's seen exactly. And he told me that they would run and run and run and look back and then they would slowly squawk them because they thought it was, you know, it was gone. But then it would come out of nowhere. Like it just come out of nowhere. You couldn't hear it coming. It just there. And so when they got to the vehicle, um, the the boys got in the car and uh, the they looked at each other and the other boy told them he said we're we're never going to talk about this and they never did, and the other boys never talked about it. So well the man now, but so he's the first one to open up about it, which you know I think people should talk about it, no matter how crazy other people think you are or or whatever it may be. That's something that you are you're holding within yourself that is affecting you in your in your everyday life emotionally um ptsd is just not people who are more but people who experience things like that these creatures i mean they are not supposed to exist (laughs) i mean so i could see this with people who encounter uh, aliens um ufos things like that Mm-hmm. Oh, I can too. I, I've had uh, a, a few uh, Bigfoot researchers on the show, and uh, uh, there this thing happened the past two years. But about about two years ago, four years in a row, uh, every spring, you know, you know how you leave your windows open where the air's so cool and feels so good, and you know everything's warming up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I live in a valley. And about two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I'd hear like they they show on these TV shows and these recordings I've heard of that scream or holler that these Bigfoots do. And I every time I go out on my back porch to make sure that's what I'm hearing, it stopped. And then all of a sudden, every dog in the valley would start barking, and then the coyotes would start barking. Well, I come in, give it about thirty minutes, and it calm back down. Then I'd hear it's hollering or screaming again i go back yep. out they stop but it sounds like they're a mile or two miles three miles away and these researchers I, when i talked to them about it they would all say the same thing uh, you were hearing one it was trying to lure you out while there was others sitting there around you watching you yeah i'm like what <laughs> they're like yep just because you see one don't mean that they ain't a whole bunch of others around now, because what they, gets they, me they travel in packs yeah yeah and that's what gets me is like i understand that we're not constantly in the woods and there's part of these mountains that we have not touched i get that but how the fuck do they get around and we not i mean i know people encounter them but how I don't that's what gets me about it. And that's why I have a mixed emotions on what the I mean, I know what they are, I get what they are, but how they travel, how they live, um, you know, it, I don't know, it gets it goes a little deeper down the rabbit hole, I guess, for me, and it's wild. But, you know, it's a theory, so hell, everybody's got theories, but you know, when I talk to um, my friends who are Bigfoot hunters and have encountered these, they're like, these things are physical because some people like to say they're spiritual, which I believe it may be both. Um, Mm -hmm. Not so much like saying it's purely spiritual, like a a spirit, because Native Americans, they call them the grandfather and grandmothers of the mountain. Um, That's what they refer to Bigfoot as. However, what if it's more than that? We have places in our universe that are so thin that we end up with things like portals that spirits pass back and forth through okay well what if we had places in the earth where 
creatures like this can pop up and go back. And that's the reason we don't find bodies. That's the reason we, you know, we we have no evidence. You know? I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And, you it know, really and does I, to me. I think about it, and I'm like, well, damn, no wonder, you know? Well, also, uh, they've been some scientists that I've read that have uh, – uh, seen a correlation between UFO sightings and Bigfoot sightings. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? The girls, <laughs> the girls make fun of me for this, but I'm. The thing about me is I'm an astral traveler, which means that I have out of body experiences, and I've talked about this a lot before. But you know, it puts things in a, things in a different perspective because I've seen things on other dimensions. Um, which is real people it might sound crazy but it's real as fuck um because i'm a level-headed person you can ask rodney you know i am who i am and you know you know people like us if we tell you something you're gonna sit there and listen and you're gonna believe it because we're no bullshitters um they make fun of me because of this uh i have dreams sometimes and you know they're different between they're they're different than brain dump because everybody has brain dump dreams where it makes no sense and it's just stupid or it's funny. But then there's also the, the visions and then there's also the premonitions uh, of things that you know you're supposed to remember. Well, I had a fucking dream about Bigfoot and I didn't think nothing about it because it was the first time I had that dream. And I was like, okay, well, let's see where this is going to go. And I was at my grandparents' house, and um, it was at my aunt's house because they lived right beside them, and there was a Bigfoot running through the woods. And I'm like, what's this supposed to mean? Because I can remember it. I woke up remembering it, and I knew I was supposed to remember it. Well, I'd be damned if, like, two nights later, if I don't have the same dream and it's followed up. See the one Bigfoot, and all behind it's like this big herd. I guess you would call it a herd. I don't know. A whole big lot of Bigfoot, and they're running together. And they're running down this hill where my, my mom and papa's road is because it's a holler. Well, instead of the road being there, it was like one of the big old, um, God, what are they called in the cities? Like, um, they're cemented, and it's where they do their backwater flow and they, whatever. Um, but anyway, that was there. And then there was government people there in hazmat suits. See, this fucked me up. And this sounds so stupid. So it was, and that to me told me that the government knows they cover it up because what happened next made perfect sense. So there was this huge opening. And these Bigfoot run through the tunnel, and that opening is shut. See what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And that, yeah. So for me, I was like, damn. That made me think. I'm like, that's kind of fucked up. But then I was like, damn, that makes perfect sense. Because we all talk about the government already knows about it, and they're covering up for it. But to me, it just indicated that, you know, this is happening, and and what if it is happening this way? That these are creatures, but they're creatures not so much on our dimension, but on another dimension. So they cross back and forth. Oh, I think that's very much possible. I even think it's possible with the paranormal. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Because when we talk about it, it's planes of existence. We're on the physical now, the things that we can touch, that with our senses, that we can sense. But... When we start to go inside, when we start to med like meditation, then that's when we can actually break free from the physical and and actually research and get to know these other planes of existence. Um, I've been pulled up to the Akashic Records before, which I had heard about in the past, but I was like, eh, you know, I take it with a grain of salt. I'm open-minded, right? But until you have that experience, it does not shake you. I was shook by it. So it was a pretty cool experience. Um, but it, it put things in perspective. I think when you're on your spiritual journey and you're learning, it's pretty cool because you know, you feel inside that it feels right. Um, and it makes sense because other people start coming together with the same kind of theories and ideas. And it wasn't because I read it out of a book because Lord knows I'm ADD and I can't read for shit. <laughs> I had an out of body experience one time and it scared the shit out of me. I hope I never go through that again. Uh, uh, that was recent, right? Well, that most people say that is more of a, a near death, near death, 
and but the outer body that happened about uh let's see 20 years ago and i was floating up towards the roof and you know i was laying on the couch asleep and and i, I could oh, feel yeah. like that wasn't right and i looked up and i'm like why is the roof like just a few inches <laughs> away i put my hand up to stop and I kind of looked down, you know, looked over my shoulder, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm laying on the couch. I'm dying. <laughs> Hello, TV dying. Not now. No. And then the door opens, and I fall back into my body, and I jump up, and I'm like, <gasps> trying to breathe. And my, yep. and my kids are coming yep. in from school. They're like, hey, Daddy. You okay? And I'm like, no. Pop, oh, you know, dad, daddy needs a damn joint bad. That's what Daddy needs. Oh my God! I'm telling you, like, see, you understand. And people who've never had these type of experiences, they have no clue because everybody's different. Like you, you're, you're like, you're floating up out of your body. Me, I would go on the lower planes. So everything that I was experiencing, I would see creatures from other lower planes, and it happens all the time, guys. So just like, for instance, Misty. When she goes into meditation, she gets pulled down to a lower plane. So the lower planes, it's not so much that everything is negative. The further you get, yeah, it's a little negative. But everything looks different because you got to think of it this way. We are on a physical plane. We're talking about way, you know, other dimensions, other life forms and like, you know, interdimensional beings, things like that do exist. Um, <laughs> she always has negative what she thinks is negative experiences or overwhelming experiences because it, it very much so is because it's freaky as shit because we're not taught about this stuff. Um, I've seen little creatures before when I first seen my first entity ever, I died. I actually, I'm not religious, but you know, everybody that graduates gets a Bible kind of thing. I was like, get my Bible out because at that point in time, this is when I, I first was having these experiences and that was the first thing that I have ever ever had seen so it was pretty you know it really set my path for who I am right now because I have a better understanding of it that not to fear it but to understand it because that's what we're taught so much is to fear what we don't know oh yeah I know the first experience I had of uh, an apparition I was probably about 12, 13 years old, and I'd always go back up on the hill. And like I said, I'd just play what they call surviving today. I was just me playing. Uh -huh. And I noticed this guy on the other side, because it was a little small valley between the hills, and I noticed this guy would always follow me, and I'd wave, and he'd wave and smile, and I'd keep on going up to the top hill and then not see him no more. Uh -huh. so finally, one day, I was talking to Dad about it, and I said, Dad, who is this guy? dressed in a gray pants and this kind of a grayish stripe in his shirt, kind of bald, always coming up the other side of the hill. He's like, what are you talking about? Well, I explained it all to him. And he said, well, the next time you see him, he says, stop and, you know, holler over at him and ask him who he is. And uh, so I did. A couple of days later, going back up there, I seen him and I stopped, waved, he waved and smiled. And I said, hey, buddy. You know, who are you? And he just smiled and just disappeared right in front of me. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you ain't never seen a fat boy running down a hill so damn quick in your life. <laughs> and I, I told Daddy, I said I found out who that guy was. Who? I said he's a damn ghost. He he's not real. He wasn't. He just disappeared <laughs> on me. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. I don't know. It's an amazing world when people can step back and, you know, uh, I don't know. When I first started having my awakening and realizing that I was different and I, I realized that we are spiritual beings and then everybody has this ability of intuition and this is who we're meant to do. Like, this is who we're meant to be. This is how we're meant to grow. Um, it's not so much of growing and, and discovering things physically, but to grow and discover things spiritually. And that's what we're meant to do. And everybody is born with this innate intuition that we forget about. And we just, you know, are taught, again, we are wired to think a certain way. 
and that's unfortunate because um which you know nowadays obviously there is a big huge new age movement that's happening uh people are using crystals and essential oils and they don't know what the fuck for most of them don't even know what they do but they they know that um you know, some people are using religion for it, and that's cool too. Whatever they want to do, say so Jesus used it too, and he might have. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it's pretty cool to see people. Um, but that's the thing too, and that most of them don't even understand what they're talking about. Like when we talk about, you know, your your vibe attracts your tribe. They think it's just cute, and it's some kind of like bohemian kind of style going on. But it has a deeper meaning, and um, you know, it, it's all about the connection, connecting to others, and uh, being that positivity and being able to grow with each other as human beings and spiritual beings. Oh yeah, I, I mean I agree with that. It's uh, it, it, it's just an amazing world, and what I guess what amazes me with people is the fact that you know they're so close-minded about things. You know your your ancestors used to do shit would blow your fucking minds today, and you'd probably mm-hmm. call. You know, devil worshippers or some shit. I mean, yep. but they they did it to survive. A lot of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just like the healing that I do. Um, it, it's funny because once you start to actually um, you you embrace that path and and you start to grow from it. For me personally, I'm an I'm a natural healer, so I wasn't taught by anyone on how to to do what I do um if I had to say anybody taught me it would be spirit and spirit for me would be God or source or whoever you want to say it is um just leading me and growing like that way so um it's pretty cool because once I started embracing my path and learning more and meeting new people I realized that there's people in my family who are distantly um cousin uh kin to me they are actually intuitive healers or they're reiki masters or they're just you know they're they they're out there doing this and i'm like wow that's pretty cool and not even knowing it and i've got people i've got a cousin in johnson city who's a massage therapist and she does reiki which reiki is healing energy work um but it's a japanese art which is taught by book so um which is cool, but that's not how I I roll. I'm not a book learner. I'm more of a hard knock. Let's do it this way, uh, learner learner. So, and that's the way it was back here in the mountains. And when we talk about granny women and things like that, um, breathing in the baby's mouth to get rid of thrush, and it's just not women either. It's men. Men. Um, I know I have an uncle who can breathe in baby's mouth to get rid of thrush. Um, or taking the uh, warts away and things like that. Um, People think and now it's like wives' tales and stuff like that, and it never happened, but it does happen. Uh, And and it's pretty cool that, that, you know, there's still people that can keep them traditions alive and educate people. Yeah, because... You know, their ancestors, they don't understand. This this is going to kind of get a little political, where these people are like, you know, we're Americans. Yeah, we are Americans now. But your great-grandfather or your great-great-great-grandfather and so forth down the line Mm -hmm. could be Irish, could be English, could have been Chinese, Japanese. I mean, come on. You, You people are forgetting where their ancestry mm-hmm. came from and what they brought to this country, even yep. their beliefs, rituals, and so forth. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, and when we go back to even, like, the Native Americans, um, that's why we most of us are like, oh, we stand behind Native Americans completely because we come over and we, we said, you know what, we're going to take this from you, which was wrong. We all know it was wrong. Um and and most of us can trace our lineage back to Europeans. So, yeah, it's just amazing too, just to to know where you're from originally, like where your lineage is from, and um and you know what's really cool too, and if you're like me and you believe in reincarnation and things like that, to learn about your past life because it was kick ass. Um, we went up to Pennsylvania and there was actually a past life regression um uh, professional up there. And I went under, Rhonda went under 
Misty went under and um, actually videoed mine, and it's on Facebook. However, the volume, like you couldn't hardly hear, so you'd have to put earbuds in and listen very close. But it was the most intense experience I've had in that situation ever. Like I was, I had to watch this video to know what happened because when you're under you don't remember but when you watch the video it starts coming back like a dream and it's weird like that but I when I woke up I was bawling I had tears rolling down my eyes and didn't know why and it's just it's really amazing experience and I suggest everyone should have something like this done uh, because it makes sense in your in your today life if you're a person who believes in reincarnation um it puts things in perspective of the person that you are today, this life that you're living right now. Well, this is something that blows Christians' minds when you tell them uh, that the original Christians, the first ones that became Christ, that were the original Christians, mm-hmm. they believed in reincarnation. Oh yeah. And you t- you tell a Christian that today, you you get your head knocked off. But. Oh, you know, Where's the spirit going to go? Why can't the spirit be recycled and keep going and trying to, you know, make right of the wrongs they've done in the past life? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what it is. We're spiritual beings. We're sitting here. We choose to come back. And whether we think, God, this is a shitty fucking, (laughs) I mean, just like we've been talking about this whole segment is like, well, the last segment is like, God, man, we live in a shitty world. And we do. Why would we want to be here? Why? Because we realize that once we pass away, we have all this knowledge and we can see things so differently that why wouldn't you want to live, but truly live and to understand and grow. Um, And that's what it's all about. And that's why there's such a difference in people like, say us and what we're talking about. It's more positive. It's upbeat. It's um, on, on a different level spiritually. While you could get, you know, a 90 year old preacher or whoever they're full of hate and they're talking about how wrong we are and you know all this blah 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 and that would tell me that person's not spiritually mature that they're going to probably they're probably young in their um reincarnating lives yeah that's true and that's something that i've always said about where people have passed away or or, are going through that uh, experience of dying and they talk about uh, going through a tunnel and seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I've often uh-huh. thought that was the vagina. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, being born. Yep. Yep, I've often thought it would. But when they come back to this life, does that mean that that baby that was born in whatever the life that was going to happen, did they did they not make it or did well, another we, snow take its place? Or, you know, I've often right. wondered. That break. That's a beautiful thing about past life regressions because I believe it was Rhonda um, who actually um, seen herself being born. Like she saw that same exact thing that you described, and then she come out like she didn't see a vagina, but she knew this was her mother and she was being born, and she seen the nurse and the, the surroundings and all that. And this is cool shit. I mean. There's actually somebody in Abington that does this, and Rhonda had went to her first, and then this lady second, because she wanted to see how the experiences lined up, and guess what they did? The things that she experienced with this woman in Pennsylvania, she experienced when she went under with this woman in Abington, and we had talked about getting her to come to the Nickers and Me next year, and... uh offering this for the public because I think it would be I don't know it's very cool it's really really cool you sit there and you wonder how can somebody put you under hypnosis because I've always been curious about hypnosis I'm like does that really work but guess what I've been under and you see me laughing in this thing you see me crying you see me switch my facial expressions like I'm someone else because you are she walks you through this process of who you are, what the time frame is. You come off with these fucking dates. I'm like, well, how the hell? Because I'm sitting there. I went all the way back to where I didn't even know what the date was, and I was Native American. And it was hard because apparently I was Native American in two of my past lives, and they were all very hard lives. Um, I think one being the furthest back that we went, and she had to bring me back out of it because I was so uh, – I was – 
sobbing uncontrollably. Um, I think it, I was in the times where Native Americans were slaughtered. And I think that, you know, I, I was there for some of that. And that's, I don't know. It's it's a different type of experience that makes you think um, so much differently when you think about reincarnation and how it affects this life. You know, I've always been interested in that because when I first started driving a truck uh, <clears throat> across country, I'd never been no further than like, of Tennessee. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and then once, uh, you know, going through Arkansas and Oklahoma, Texas, nothing. But as soon as I hit New Mexico, I just felt like this is home. Why do I feel this is home? Uh huh. Some people said, you know, that's deja vu. That wasn't deja vu. It, it, right. It, it's like when I was passing by certain landmarks and mountains and valleys and stuff, I'm like, I know this place. Why do I know this place? It just mm-hmm. was so fucking powerful. In the 10 years I drove out through there, uh, New Mexico and Arizona is the only two states that I felt that no, no matter if I was the northern, central, or southern part of those two states, I've been there. Right. Yeah. I know I've been there. Yeah. And see, I mean, that's the thing. There's so many people out there. Some people, I mean, you even see the stories where the kids is like, I know who I was. It used to be. I was killed. You hear these stories all the time. And I've actually met people who say, yes, I remember my past lives. I mean, I was like, I didn't remember none of my past lives. However, I knew what I was drawn to. I've always been very drawn to Native American belief systems and Native American lifestyles. And I couldn't figure out why. I just thought that. I don't know. That's just, I was very drawn to it. But it makes sense now. Um which it made sense uh, back in 2016 when I talked about the Akashic Records, when I was pulled up there, which, by the way, the Akashic Records to Christians is mentioned in the Bible as the Book of Life. Well, this is the Library of Life. Um, so this is where everything in the future and the past and everything that is to be is stored. Uh, but anyway, I was pulled up there, and at one time I was shown some of my past lives. Well, this is the kick-ass part. When I went under the, for that past life regression, I saw these people that they showed me. So, I mean, it was validating, and it was awesome. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I, would, I would like to do that. I would like to see if, because I'm drawn to Native American, you know, and I, I do have Cherokee in my bloodline. Right. Uh, but I do feel like there's something more when, I, like, like I said, when I stop out there, I, I like to stop at the uh, uh, Navajo uh, uh-huh. uh, stores, and uh, I walked into one store. There's an old uh, uh, old Native American sitting there uh, on a bench, and I said, "How you doing, sir?" And he said, you know, he looked at me and he said, "You white bear." And <laughs> his sons, I thought just because we're I'm a big guy, you know, <laughs> I'm like, "Well, thank you." And then you know, his uh, grandsons came out, and I, you know, I went in, and then his grandsons came back in, and they said, "Sir, do you mind coming back out and talk to my grandfather? He's wanting to speak to you again." I said, "No, I don't mind." And I walked back out there, and and he started speaking in his native tongue, which I had no idea what he was saying, and they were interpreting it to him. And they told me they said that uh, grandfather's saying that uh, your animal spirit is quite bad. And uh, that you once was a great warrior. And I'm like, Aww. thank you. I think. Well, I'm kind of, kind of cute awesome. about it. Because I'm like, I ain't never been out here that, you know, I just started driving a truck a few months ago and just coming out yeah. here. <laughs> but yeah, it was it's, amazing. That is amazing. Because guess what? Whether people realize it or not, we meet people along our path that gives us little hints of who we are. And that's beautiful. When you're spiritually open and like, oh, well, man, everything starts coming together in puzzle pieces. And it might take you years. And it has me. And I, this is like I tell people because I'll have people that they want me to teach them and help them to grow. Well, I'll do that, but I'm not going to tell you what you're supposed to believe. And I'm not going to tell you, you know, this or that. That's for you, you to find out. That's your path. 
but it's a beautiful thing because I tell them I envy you because I had to learn the hard way on how to understand who I was as a spiritual person. Um, when I tried to look for help, it was a whole different ball game because I couldn't find nothing. And the people that I, the chat, because back then it was like online forums. Um, the only thing you read about was demons and how this is the devil and all that stuff. And I knew better than that could feel it. You know, when you feel it, you know that this can't be wrong. This can't be bullshit. And and like I said, I come from a very level-headed family. I'm not crazy. Um, I'm not on medication. So, you know, <laughs> it, it's just, I wish more people could come over to our side and see how life is truly supposed to be lived. And um, when we talk about, because you hear people talking about we're all one, we are. Because we all feed off each other's energies and what we put out in the universe. Mm-hmm. Whether positive or negative. Absolutely. Well, Holly, it's about 15 minutes in uh, left. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short because uh, okay. I need to run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good to me because I need to get in bed because I got work in the morning. Well, I appreciate you so uh, so much for coming on the show. It's great, uh, you know. I I always love talking to you and and the girls. <laughs> I mean, I, I could I talk to y'all day and night. I mean, I can. Y'all are wonderful people. Oh well, we thank the world of you too, Rodney. And I appreciate for having me on here. I ain't done it in a while. I'm I'm rusty. <laughs> well, I thought you did great, and yeah, you know, especially if there's no questions for you. <laughs> Well, we can bullshit our way through anything. You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I talk on the phone for a living. I'm good at it. <laughs> well, I, I try to avoid talking on the phone as much as I can, but when I have to, I, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rodney. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night, and thanks for having me on your show. Okay, you have a good night, too. And, I, again, I appreciate it. You take care. Uh, All right. Love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, ever I cut my own mic off. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's it for us tonight. Uh, oh, I guess y'all want to know who's going to be coming on to my next Thursday night. Hopefully, if they call in. <laughs> let, me, let me pull out my handy dandy paper here that I had uh, that I've been writing on. Let's see here. Who we got coming on next week? Do I have it right down here? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess for next Thursday night, July 26th, will be Renee Barnett. Renee is a television producer, journalist, a radio producer, and personality. And she has a uh, radio show called Night Vision. So that's going to be interesting. We'll have a great show with her. Hopefully learn a lot about TV and radio. But Again, thank you all for listening in, and sorry about all the technical problems and our guest that's probably still asleep right now, <laughs> but we'll see about if we can get her back on some other time. We might have to do a pre-recorded show for her. Well, y'all have a good night, and I appreciate it. Y'all have a good weekend, and take care. Alternative facts. Oops, Oops wrong one. Try this that's again. it for us tonight. I want to thank everyone that took the time to listen in. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Vibe Radio Network and to Ryan for putting up with us. Also to all the first responders and our men and women in the armed services. Thank you for your service and the sacrifices that you and your families make every day to keep our great nation safe. Tune in next week to another exciting show starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone can go to our Facebook page within the chaos and don't forget to like our page uh, to see upcoming guests along with past shows, postings, or you can also go to uh, my website at www.blackdiamondps.org or blogtalkradio.com forward slash vibe radio network. Also, we have a YouTube channel, so go to YouTube. Look up Within the Chaos for past shows. Thanks again. Until next week, everyone have a safe weekend and have a good night. And love you all. Be careful out there.
sorry. But I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, or what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! Fix Finder tool from AutoZone is a source of relief. Because when your check engine goes, our Fix Finder goes. No matter what your problem is, our Fix Finder will help you troubleshoot it. For some, it's just a loose gas cap. For others, an O2 sensor. So you can kiss that yellow light goodbye and go. Ah. It's the free Fix Finder from AutoZone. It's just one more way AutoZone helps you do more. Because doing more is what we do best. See store for details. Get in the zone, AutoZone.